So today we are looking at the brand new 2021 Top Fuel. Pretty much the same bike, but a few teeny differences. So obviously one of the big, big differences is the control lever for the dropper post and the remote lockout. It's now the double tap system. So you get to be pushing it with your thumb and pushing it with your thumb to release. That changes it from last year's twist style throttle, which I kind of like, to a bit bulkier looking dropper post switch. Dropper post is still here, still works, and now you have a double release. So personally, this system works well. It actually functions quite nicely, has good feel to it, and I think it's potentially easier to use than the throttle style, but there was something nice about using that throttle style. It felt very locked in, and and connected when you do it. This one feels a little softer. Um, plus, I think it gives the chance to mix up the controls with the dropper post a little bit. Overall, the look of the bike has not changed. They still have a minnow link system here to change the geometry, making it more of a, a down country trail bike as opposed to a endurance race machine that it's designed to be, which is nice that you have that option. The inverted shock allows for larger clearances, um, as opposed to having all this bulk up top here. Does have the cable guide slot here and everything's all integrated. Looks clean, looks super nice. This is a matte black finish with uh, silver lettering from Trek. Same size tires as last year, so they have the XR3 on the front and the rear team issue, so they are tubeless ready right off the bat. Kobe Comp are all tubeless ready, so that's nice. The shifting they've paired really nicely this year. The SRAM NX is a nice responsive shifting set. Definitely a little bit slower than the GX, but very easy to upgrade. You could switch it out to a GX handle if you wanted, or keep it as this. It's easy ways to make this bike much, much lighter, but taking out the tubes, making it tubeless, you're gonna get a super lightweight, fast but comfy geometry bike, which can really tackle any terrain. Trek has, I think, hit the nail on the head with this bike. For anyone who's looking for a fast cross-country machine, but is comfy and actually could follow you guys who have the 150 mil Santa Cruz Bronson, this is a great option. You do have a Boost 148 hub here. They do have Trek's dropper post on here, which is a Bontrager brand. It is much more stable than previous years, really stiff doesn't seem to wobble or have any of that seat jiggle that some cheaper dropper posts have, putting it into a more premium level dropper post. This thing still has knock block, allowing for a straighter down tube, a lot stiffer performance, but with the limitations, it helps add some protection to the frame and fork contact points. Only one bottle mount, doesn't matter the size, and as the aluminum model and the top fuel, it does not have the integrated storage. So the top fuel is 120 mils on the front, 115 on the rear, making this a really great XC bike as well as your own adventure single track machine. The geometry design on the top fuels are made so that you could take this to a downhill, really technical, tricky track and be able to perform on it, switch that middle length down, you'll still be able to do it. You know, you're not gonna be hitting huge drops, but this is an XC race bike and it's an endurance XC race bike. So you're still able to get away with a lot of things. Those XC guys can do a lot of technical descents and it's not just about keeping all the wheels on the ground. So the new drop lock system, which is a dropper post with a built-in lockout is Bontrager's thing. It does kind of make like a nice clean point of contact and allows you to have easier swap out of grips, which is really nice. 
You get an air fork on the front and rear, so very easy to customize to your own personal weight. Um, as well, Bontrager's website, suspension.trekbikes.com, has a really good suspension calculator based off your own weight. Most of the time, that's what I use. On the smaller models, they do have a curved top tube, so that is something to look at, and that's just to get that stand over to a smaller height and still keep these big 29 inch wheels throughout the entire lineup, whether it's an extra small or extra large. So the top fuel definitely is designed for that rider hunting down the, those KOMs. And we're talking on the climbs primarily, the flats, the flowy section. Anybody looking for that downhill aggressive, rougher, rougher stuff, it can do it with the limited suspension that's on it. You could be more beneficial with a wider tire biggest, more durable suspension, but this will make it down here and put in a great time, potentially even king of the mountain. Anything climbing, anything endurance, anything fast flowy, this is a fast, lightweight bike. We're able to get that power down very efficiently. And at 4,000 Canadian dollars, it actually has a pretty good power spec for it. Aluminum frame, integrated, looks clean. They're really hitting the mark on the money here. So the top fuel is for anyone really. You don't have to be an XC racer. The geometry is comfy enough that anyone can ride this. Yet if you were to enter an XC race, it's also fast enough that anyone can compete and actually set records, actually set times. I'll link a video up here to one of Trek's riders where they compete on the top fuel to do one of the fastest long distance rides. I don't know what it is, but it's impressive. And he is on the top fuel. Obviously a higher spec than this, but it's the same principles to it. All right, guys, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and comment other videos. This is just another quick tutorial, quick video. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. All right, guys, good luck.